In this demonstration, we are going to uh, go through a series of steps that will create a pond uh, and grading and add it to a terrain model that we can then use to evaluate or analyze the discharge from our drainage system into it. So I'm going to um, use some basic geometry tools to lay out the pond give it elevation and add it to a terrain. So we'll begin with using the place line tool. I'm going to give it a feature definition and then I'm going to go ahead and place um, the inside toe of my pond bottom here. I'll make that 150 uh, feet long. And then the other side of the pond, I will use a tool called offset, single offset. And select a feature definition. Pick the element I want to start with. Offset, in this case, I'll go 30 feet. And place the other side of the pond bottom. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and close off the ends. I'll go back to my line between points and I will uh, snap to the end of that line and that line and same thing on the other end and I'm going to round off the uh, corners so I'll go ahead and use a tool arc between elements simple arc give it a feature definition select I'll give it, you know, just a general 12-foot radius, trim them up. Do that for every corner. So I'm just going to create a nice rounded shape. And then I'll put those into one complex element. So I'll go ahead and complex those. So I'll select this edge first except the complex. So now I'm left with one element. Get this, delete this guy out of the way because I don't need that for anything. Um, so here's my element. I'm going to go ahead and give it elevation using some of the vertical tools. Um, now I know that um, um, my bottom I want it to be at um, a certain elevation so I'm just going to say profile by constant elevation locate the element, key in the elevation, 2003, accept it, and it places it in 3D for me. And I'm going to go ahead and offset that element upon bottom and make the top of pond. And so in my case, I'm going to go ahead and offset it, um, let's say, 12 feet and we'll give it a pond top feature definition just to be different and I'm going to set it at 2007 or 3 to 1 slope up from the bottom so I'll use that same tool locate the element key in the elevation and it'll place that in 3D. Now while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and add these elements to a terrain. So I'm going to create a, um, and I'll go, before I do that though let me go ahead and create the, um, I'm going to create a flat top. So I'll go back and offset And we'll say five feet. And in this case, I'll set its elevation just by vertical offset from the another element. So just a different way of doing it, but same result. So I'll do a constant slope. Select this element to profile. Reference element will be the inside top vertical offset will be zero and then I'll 
and establish it all the way around it flat. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add, put these in a terrain. So I'm going to create a terrain from elements. I'm going to choose a feature definition and call it pond. So I'm going to locate the, these elements that I want to add to the train. Reset. I'll make them break lines. And have it create the train. So I can see in my 3D view, I now have the contours drawn. So I can kind of get start to see my pond take shape here. All right. So next, I want to um, slope up to meet the roadway. So under Model Detailing, we have a tool, Create 3D by Slope to Target. And what I'll see is <coughs> I can use this tool to create lines in 3D by slope to a terrain to elevation for a distance. So for example, if I want to create a uh, slope to target to a terrain, first thing I choose is, you know, to terrain model, select my reference element. I'm going to start with, you know, this particular element here. Now, what is, where's my terrain? I could come over here, for example, and select the active or the survey. I've got this roadway referenced as well. So I select those, or one of those. <laughs> and <coughs> but you can see in this case, um, you know, I'm not I'm not going to hit the roadway except on this side. And I won't, and so I, I need something that has both both the information in it. So while I've referenced the the survey, I've referenced in the um, terrain from the road. So I'm going to go ahead and and you know shift gears for a minute and create a complex terrain that has both of those in it that I can then target. So I'm going to come over here back to my terrain tools. I'm going to create a complex terrain. create complex terrain model. So I can see a list of terrains that I have available to me either through reference files or in my active file. And I'm going to go ahead and you know add my survey. That's my primary surface. And then I want to merge my roadway, which is called Tom's Creek in this example, into my primary surface survey. So I'll go ahead and add that give it a feature definition. I'll just call it um, proposed triangles is fine. And I'll call this um, survey plus proposed. So I'll click finish. And so now I have I have my survey and my proposed. Maybe if I Oops, maybe I'll change the shading here, and you can kind of get a feel for what we have, so you can see. And then in my this view, I'll go ahead and turn off my um, 3D view of that reference. Simplify my graphics there. All right, so now I can use that model detailing tool, 3D, create 3D element by slope. And I, when I go to terrain model, I can select the survey plus proposed terrain model. So locate my element, select my terrain model, cut and fill. And I can see here now, you know, the results of that. So I go ahead and, and uh, 
accept the result. We're going to start at the beginning. And we're going to go all the way around to the start, <coughs> to the end, and accept the element. So you can see here, maybe if I simplify my view a little bit better, I turn off the triangles for now, you can see that's the element that created. So if I'm not satisfied with that, I can delete it and try a different slope. And then if I want, I can, you know, move move my pond. So I can come here and maybe I want to shift my pond over. I can move it just a hair over, let's say. And you can see it updates everything. So go to the other end as well. And you can see it moves all the information because everything's related to each other in this case. And then the final thing is I'll come here and go ahead and add a feature. I'm going to add the um, this line to my terrain. So I'm going to select the terrain, and that's going to be the pond. And then, oops, I don't want anything in my selection set, so let me clear my selection set. Yep. So go ahead and add a feature, locate the pond, terrain model, locate my feature. It's going to be a boundary in this case, at the, and we'll go ahead and add that to my pond. And again, I can, you know, if I were to, for example, make the pond skinnier, everything should, should update accordingly make it bigger you can see <laughs> and again if you move move it you can start to see how you can encroach on the roadway and then finally maybe I want to see everything together so I'll go back to my edit complex terrain model, select my complex terrain model, accept that, and I can bring my pond in and look at that. So we'll go ahead and merge the pond in with the rest of it. Click apply. And now I should see I've got my pond in there. And again, maybe I need to, you know, turn off some, turn off, um, I've got a couple terrains in there, so let me turn off my other terrain, and we'll go to my references, and that was existing ground, so let's turn that off, and let's get Oh, and edit my complex terrain because it looks like I didn't add it. I appended it. So let's ch change that to merge, apply, and that cleans it up. And so you can see now in the 3D view, everything together. And now the next step would be to um, set that up in s subsurface utilities to analyze the, uh, the pond and volume and the discharge.